forests of Ontario have been challenged by humans in many ways for the past several hundred years. This is only very recent when you put into perspective how many years it has been since the end of the last ice age. Some of the challenges include clearing the land for agriculture, climate change, and the introduction of invasive species. An invasive species is a species that was introduced by humans, either deliberately or accidentally, from elsewhere, such as from another continent, that has a significant negative impact on the ecosystem. Among the most infamous invaders is the gypsy moth, Lamantria dispar. The gypsy moths found in eastern North America are of European origin, called the European gypsy moth, Lamantria dispar dispar. This is sometimes abbreviated as LDD. In Ontario, they range throughout the southern and central areas of the province to as far northwest as Sault Ste. Marie. The first gypsy moth was detected in Ontario in 1969, although the first defoliation event wasn't recorded until 1981. This species uses a wide range of different species of trees and shrubs as their larval host plants. Their main hosts include deciduous trees such as oak, birch, and aspen. Some of their less favored hosts include maple, beech, willow, linden, and other species of poplar. Less favored species are fed upon when favored hosts have been defoliated or are not available. Coniferous trees are also not favored, but they do feed on species such as eastern white pine, balsam fir, and Colorado blue spruce. Young caterpillars feed during the daytime, whereas older caterpillars feed at night, resting during the day. At high population densities, they can feed any time of day. The gypsy moth has only one generation per year. They go through five to six instars as a caterpillar. This is followed by the pupal stage and then the emergence of adults. The early instar caterpillars are dark gray with orange spots on their back. Older instars have red and blue spots in two rows running down their back. This is a key feature in identifying them from other species. These hairy caterpillars also have a distinct tuft of long hairs just behind both sides of the head, another key feature. Pupae are formed in loosely constructed cocoons of silk and have small tufts of hairs on them. The adult male and female are sexually dimorphic. Males are brown and have plumose and tinnae. They are smaller than the female and are strong flyers. The females are white with black markings. The females of the European strain are flightless. Males use their antennae to locate females by their pheromones. The females of the Asian strain, Lamantria dispar asiatica, are capable of flight. The Asian strain is not established in eastern North America. Eggs are laid in a mass on various objects such as on tree trunks, rocks, and on man-made structures. The mass is tan in color. They overwinter in the stage and the caterpillars hatch in the spring of the following year. In Ontario, hatching takes place starting in May and feeding continues into early July. Adults emerge, mate, and eggs are laid around the end of July. Shortly after hatching, the caterpillars can use silk to travel by wind in a process called ballooning. This is the main dispersal method. Ballooning allows caterpillars to reach more suitable hosts. Population outbreaks occur every 7 to 10 years where they reach a high population density that can result in severe or complete defoliation of their host trees. Predators, parasitoids, and disease knock back populations after they swell to outbreak proportions. A wide variety of birds, small mammals, and other types of insects feed on the caterpillars. Insect predators include many different species of beetles and parasitoids. A tachinid fly, known as Compsilura consonata, is an introduced parasitoid that commonly preys on the gypsy moth. Two important diseases that affect gypsy moth numbers include a nuclear polyhedrosis virus, that specializes on infecting the species, and a fungus known as Entomophaga mamega. During outbreaks, 
Gypsy moths significantly defoliate trees in large areas of forest, sometimes entirely. Forests most affected are ones that are dominated by oak. Although trees can put out another set of leaves in the summer, repeated defoliation events can kill them. Human recreation is negatively impacted during outbreaks as well. Caterpillars often fall to the ground from trees and can land on people in parks and on trails. The caterpillars are not poisonous, but some people have a allergic reaction to their hairs. People who are allergic can get a red bumpy rash from direct contact with them. The caterpillars can also be a visual nuisance when they crawl across structures in large numbers in parks and backyards. The control methods used depends on the life stage of the moth being targeted. From August to April, look for their conspicuous brown egg masses on tree trunks. The ones within reach can be scraped off and destroyed. Other places to look for their eggs include structures such as campers, picnic tables, sheds, and other objects on the property. Early instar caterpillars can be controlled by spraying a biological pesticide. This control method is sometimes done by cities as an aerial spray over large areas. The preferred biological pesticide for controlling gypsy moths contains BTK. BTK is a naturally occurring bacteria that quickly kills caterpillars. It has little effect to most non-target organisms, including humans. Unfortunately, this bacterium also kills non-target moth and butterfly caterpillars. Later in star caterpillars congregate lower on the tree during the daytime while they're resting. A trap can be set up around the bottom of a tree trunk to exploit this behavior. Burlap can be wrapped around each affected tree. The burlap should be inspected for caterpillars every day, and any found can be picked off and dropped in soapy water. Pupae can also be collected and killed wherever they're found. Adults are short-lived, and it is not usually necessary to target them. To help maintain the health of our forests and green spaces, we can do our part by trying our best to prevent the spread of this invasive species to new areas. To maintain the tree species compositions of our forests within the distribution of the gypsy moth, we must continue to monitor populations and apply control measures to minimize the impact of outbreaks. Homeowners can help by keeping a watch on the health of their trees and implementing control methods to keep the species numbers in check. Although the gypsy moth can be a significant threat to our forests and a nuisance to us humans, it is important to remember that outbreaks only occur every 7 to 10 years and that nature has ways to recover from catastrophes like this.